Hello, this is David Heine, and I'm here at the Stedelijk Museum at, as you can see, the Baselitz Show. With me today is the director and good friend of Baselitz, Rudy Fuchs. Baselitz has a long history in this country. I mean, he had an exhibition in 72 for the first time. At, at a small gallery. Then he had one in 78. And then the first show was in 79, a museum show in Eindhoven, where I was director at the time. And we were all very young. And, um, and apparently that show was important for him because as he had had a show in, just before in, 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 in Bern, in Switzerland. But this actually was the first show we had in Holland in, in, in a non-German speaking country. Which was important also that it was in German in, in Holland because of this, the history and about the fact that these artists at the time in 79 were still considered to be or were considered to be kind of old fashioned, maybe slightly too German because of the iconography, you know, the eagle and uh, things like that. Which, was, which, which I thought was a very superficial judgment. But at the time there was, and still is actually, there was a, there was a division, some sort, division in, within German art and within German society. There was there's the, the Americanized Germany, which you find in Düsseldorf and Richter and Polke and uh, other artists who were very influenced by American art, by Andy Warhol and things like that. <coughs> And on that, you had, you, had, you had Baslitz, you had Luppert, you had Peng, people who actually came from the East, as of course you had Richter and Polka, but anyway, who, um, who maintained that there was something, there was a German art, quote unquote, to recover, almost like an archaeologist, you know, beyond the debris of the Second World War, there was an art which was German before that time. And um, there was a great flowering, in the you know, in, in early expressionism, but also artists like Beckmann or Otto Dix, the whole non-modernist or non-abstract or non-cubist influenced uh, art, and so Baslitz and Lüppertz and Penck and so on, also by temperament were attracted to to this kind of uh, expressionist. Uh, uh, painting, which is it is also a temperamental kind of thing. I mean, you ha you have two kinds of painters in general. You have painters who are who are uh, happy to reduce, and you had them in all times. Whether you speak about Mondrian or, but also Raphael is a reductionist painter in that sense compared to uh, 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 compared to the Venetians like Titian, you know, who who, who like to put on more and more paint. As Rembrandt did or Basel did, so there's, 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 I think it's a temperamental thing that somebody likes it a lot, and and so they wanted this, they wanted to use because there's an enormous seduction in in painting and in coloring, as you can see in these paintings. So there's every trick, every seduction is given into in, in, in a sense. And whereas if you go around the museum here, you see that we have paintings by Robert Ryman, who is an exact contemporary of Baselitz who makes these white paintings, and you see that there is an enormous resistance against this seduction. Yeah? And um, anyway, so uh, in Germany there was an enormous discussion about the modern and the traditional painter. And the traditional painter was associated, well, not quite with, the, with, with, you know, with historical Nazi Germany, but, but almost, in a sense. And it was considered to be the, the traditional aspect of painting, or the, or the, the, the non-modernist, was, was a dubious thing to do. But in Holland, and that's why the, the exhibition has this form, or became what it was, in Holland uh, the discussion didn't exist, because this country was, um, had no opinion about either or. Uh, People had, but I mean, in, as, as museums, as official institutions, no, we didn't have this. And in Germany, as now, I mean, as you know, museums also take as a, we are the museum of this or of that. 
So I, I believe that showing in this country for him was a, was a, was easy in a way. There was not there was never these these, these big debates uh, like uh, historical strife uh, as, as they now have about Martin Walzer, what he said about uh, it's very typical in in Germany. Nothing can be discussed without a fight. Uh, there's no conversation almost. Uh, it's, it's everything is it's immediate is debate is discussion is fights is. Uh, um, becomes aggressive in a sense. Um, so then he had many shows after this. And he became um, a well-known artist in Holland and, and people were buying things. And we, we I think the first paintings maybe bought by a museum were maybe bought in Eindhoven by a major museum. I, I, I just daily bought a painting at, the, at, at that 79 exhibition. So when the time came, to show him again, because it, it has not been. He has shown some paintings now here and there, here and there. But it, the last like, major show was '84, and given the fact that he is, of course, since then. I mean, '97 he was an, an unknown painter, yeah? and uh, and at that, at that time the, the famous artists were Andy Warhol and uh, Liechtenstein. And now he has become a famous painter. So it is, it is interesting to see it again. But almost, in, and, and, and see it in, in a kind of very relaxed way. So by and by, by various, uh, um, by various uh, ways and conversations, we came to the fact that it, that it should be the, the journey into the Netherlands, which is also, by the way, the, the title of a, a book by Dürer, uh, the great German painter who, who came in, who went to, to Holland in 1521, I think, made his famous trip where he saw other painters and so, and, and that's referred back to the fact that what I know of Bas, when he said that the first time he went here, his first foreign trip outside, to, uh, then Berlin where he lived, was to Holland, to Amsterdam, to this museum, this was 58 or some 59, because this, you know, by uh, auto stop by hitchhiking, and because this was the only place, the nearest place from Berlin, eh, mind you, where you could see modern art, just in a museum, just like anything else. Picasso, Ruo, Matisse uh, was here to be seen, and that's what, and that's how they, they had, and it was here to, it was seen here in that same kind of relaxed way. There was expressionist art, there was cubist art, there was abstract art, there was all together, <coughs> as, it is, as it is still now. So the, f the fact that he, that he began to show here in this country in 79, that museums started to acquire work, <coughs> meant that his work entered into a, a very different level of, of judgment. It was not judged as German art, but it was judged as painting next to other painters, be they American, British, French, Italian, Austrian, <coughs> because all this was here. Um, so it was very, it was a very. Uh, so he he became to <coughs> to like the whole thing. So there were many shows after that. At the same time, but this is a more private thing that I. We got to know each other very well, and I, in the meantime, I wrote 12 articles or essays on Baselitz. From Rudy Fuchs' essays. Baselitz is a very stubborn artist who, like Picasso, finds it difficult to recognize authority and settle into a single style. He undermines, manipulates, subverts, and what governs the quick and jerky steps of Baselitz's development, in my view, is the artistic impulse, his sense of adventure, disrupting any idea of order, any aspiration to a precise and methodological itinerary, and yet inherent in the artist's complex personality. Uh, 
And uh, the interesting thing is also about this show, what you see in the exhibition is, is basically paintings from Dutch museums and collections, with some exceptions. Because even in, when you were doing exhibitions or writing about him, things come up which you use as an illustration, and so these are there as well. Um, and then <coughs> it became a very interesting show, in my view, because it's also prints and drawings. So it's, very, it's, a, it's a classical exhibition. I mean, the shows used to be like this. I mean, Picasso shows in the 1950s were like that. You had drawings, you had paintings, you had prints. I mean, there was no... And you see sculpture, yes. You can see that he, that he, that each medium has a different potential. So whether you, I mean, you, you can make drawings with watercolor, which is, which is very fast, even, even like here. This is almost like a watercolor. It's very fast. <coughs> if, if, than his early things, huh? yes, if you use paint in a more, in a heavier fashion, the painting goes slower. So also by that way, the way you think about it when you do it, uh, this is more impulsive. And the, the other ones are more, uh, have a different kind of concentration. They're slower. Uh, when you make a drawing, you can go very fast. When you make an etching, it is a slower process because you have to carve into this plate and then you have to print it. So it, is, it, is, it has a distance between the, 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 the initial the initial uh, uh, drawing or way of doing it, and then what you get. So all these different woodcuts are different because this woodcut is even more heavier. It's heavier. Woodcut is almost like sculpture. seem to be quite different than this latest lighter family type thing. They were filled with sexuality, ecstasy, kind of a sensual nature. These seem to be lighter, more... Uh, well, they're not lighter, in the, they're bigger. bigger too. So bigger, making them bigger gives a different kind of spread. Uh, it's, there's different colors. I mean, there's this kind of reddish pink which is called magenta, uh, which is a very Californian color. He actually went to California and, uh, and he discovered this color. I mean, it's actually the color of Max Factor lipstick from the 1950s also. Uh, so a painter accumulates things like that. And the, the interesting thing about Bath is that he, he always, he never refused to use anything. That's what I meant in the beginning. So you have artists who are reductionists. They, even if, if Robert Ryman, you know, would would see a, a wonderful green, he would not he would not use it because he is committed to being making white paintings forever and forever. And that it's everything that comes along, be it subject matter, be it you know, these things come from old photographs from his family album, be it uh, whatever it is, uh, 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 is being used immediately. And um, so that's you get is. You get this kind of um, yeah, quite a what shall we say quite a a uh, a full show. And finally, uh, this being in Holland, it's interesting that that in 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 one country, over the years, by simple interest and 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 uh, all this has been accumulated. It's nice as well for us. It's a beautiful show you have here, and thank you for thank you. having the time.